Direct realism is also known as common sense realism and naive realism. Some people say it's the kind of view on the world people have before they've actually thought about things much, and so that's why it's something known as naive. Direct realism claims that the world is, at is, at is as it appears to us. Objects have shape, size, texture, smell, taste and colour, and they are as they are, regardless of you observing them or not. So if there is a tree in a forest, and the tree falls with nobody around to see or hear it, it will still make a sound. So direct realism basically says that we perceive objects with certain properties because they have certain properties. We know those properties are there and have those properties because we perceive them. For example, if there is a pie on the table and I see it in a red tin case and smell its aptly filling and I go out of the room, it will continue to be on the table with its red tin case just as I saw it smelling like its aptly filling. If you came into the room, you would see the same apple pie just as I did, exactly the same with a red tin case and you would smell exactly the same aptly filling. But is it really as simple as this? Of course it can't be. There are problems. What about if the object changes size because we are further away? Does it mean the object has actually gotten smaller? Remember the pie from earlier? Well, imagine this. Timmy comes into the room and picks up the pie. <laughs> it's going to be so insane. <laughs> it's so We watch him while he does this. Timmy then walks out of the house and starts to walk up the road. As Timmy gets further, it appears that both Timmy and the pie are getting smaller. <laughs> so are they really becoming tinier and tinier as they walk along? We know this is wrong because of modern science. This claim is false, and so I guess that's proved the naive realist wrong. No? Let's look at more evidence. How about colour? If I take a white crayon out of the crayon box and observe it, it is white. If I shut the curtains, isn't it strange how my crown looks grey? Isn't it strange how my crown, white crown looks grey? This can't be right. We know that the crown isn't colour changing as it, as it, as it is false to say it turns grey. Go on. Take clouds for example. If we look at the same cloud from different perspectives, the cloud changes colour. So who has the real perspective? The answer is nobody. It is wrong to suppose the cloud has a real colour seen by a real perspective, as we don't know who is right. Therefore, we can conclude colour is an appearance to us, not something objectively real. Now let's test temperature. If we were to get a bucket of lukewarm water and place within it one hot hand that's been on the radiator for an hour and one cold hand that's been out of the window for an hour and place them both, both in a bucket of lukewarm water, why do they both... <coughs> sense the water differently. The hot hand feels cold water while the cold hand feels warm water. This simply can't be right. How can one bucket of water be two different <coughs> be two different senses at exactly the same time? This leads us to conclude that hot and cold are not real properties but are effects that we have as observers are subject to. If a circular justification, if a naive realist claims that we know what physical objects are like because we perceive them to be, it presupposes that we perceive things exactly as they are. Circular arguments have no independent justification. For example, the Bible is true because it is the word of God. How do you know it's the word of God? Because it says so in the Bible. In addition, on some occasions we are subject to illusions and hallucinations. Such deceptions show that, not, show that not only do we not always perceive things correctly, but we sometimes see things that aren't really there. So if the direct realist is to stick by their claim that the world is exactly as it appears, then against popular belief they're making the claim. They are making the claim that hallucinations are actually real and not a factor of our imagination. So that flying pig in the sky you see is really there. Therefore, I think it's fair to conclude that direct realism is not a sustainable and realistic argument, and we can disregard it. But wait, not that quickly.
There's a more sophisticated version of the direct realism argument that has been <laughs> tweaked to deal with the <laughs> tweaked to deal with the problems of, na of the naive realism theory. The arguments of direct realism, representative realism, and idealism all have a fault. They all rely on sense data. This theory can be tackled by philosophical direct realism. The arguments of direct realism, representative and idealism all have a fault. Sense data itself is questionable. The very concept of sense data is flawed in that the sense data itself is not a physical thing or object as commonly believed by, it. by those three schools of thought, but it is an activity of the mind. Sense data is not a thing we experience directly, it is an experience. If we took a circle, for example, and we were looking at an object claiming it was circular, this must mean the sense data itself is circularly shaped, but this cannot be. We directly experience the objects, and thus there is no need to include sense data in our two-component model, the perceiver and the object. For example, when a stick looks bent in the water, this is the way it should look, given the way the water retracts light, refracts light rather. Hallucinations are not